Good day everyone! My name is Ariel Paolo Vitigali, a teacher intern in College of Education under Mrs. Marietta B. Pagaduan. For this video, we will learn new lesson about behavioral learning theory. So, let's start! I would like to share to you this quotation from Ella Frank, saying, You are free to choose, but you are not free from the consequences of your choice. This quotation marked on my mind and heart. It reflects to me about we are free whatever we want to do in our life, whether in decision making, action, thoughts, and words, we are free. But we are not free or exempted to its consequences. Every good doings and wrong doings have its equivalent consequences. Before doing something, we must think critically, logically, and ethically that our decision will result and produce good things in life. Today, our topic related to consequences also. It is a theory about the positive and negative consequences of our behavior. So let us learn the meaning of this theory and its application in real life situation. I have here a short video and let us watch the Skinner Bats. What can you observe in the video? Well, we see how the rat push a lever to get food. I am going to talk about operant conditioning which is really important concept for anyone who wants to understand human behavior cues. P.F. Skinner was regarded as the father of operant conditioning. He believed that the best way to understand behavior is to look at the causes of an action and its consequences. He called this approach operant conditioning. Classical conditioning focuses on automatic or involuntary behavior, while operant conditioning focuses on voluntary behavior like doing homework or getting in fights. First, a little bit history. This was very famously related to the psychologist, P.F. Skinner. He created the Skinner box, which we, we watched a while ago, was an experiment where he had rats inside this box and basically was able to train the rats to push a lever in order to either deliver a threat or to be rid of a shock happening. So the floor was electrified and they have got this little shock. And if they press the lever, the shock would go away and in that sense he was able to train them to perform a certain way. Operant conditioning refers to learning voluntary behavior through consequences which are either reinforcing or punishing. There are four really important concepts associated with operant conditioning that is positive and negative reinforcement and positive negative Punch. First, let us talk about the terminology. 
Reinforcement means encourages a behavior to make it more likely to happen again, while punishment means discourages a behavior to make it less likely to happen again. Positive and negative does not mean good or bad. Positive means and adding something to the situation you are introducing something. And negative means taking something away. Reinforcers. Reinforcers encourages a behavior to make it more likely to happen again. It can be positive or negative. Positive refers to presenting something and negative refers to removing something. Thus, positive reinforcement increases the probability that a behavior will occur again by presenting administering a reward or consequences. For example, child is rewarded money to buy a new cell phone for earning an A grade. And another example is a teacher may present learners with praise, treats, or increased recess time and good grades as positive reinforcers. If students work hard on a class project, receive good grades, and then work hard on another project, they have been positively reinforced for hard work. Negative reinforcement also increases the probability that a behavior will appear again by removing a negative stimulus. When people learn to escape aversive environments, they are being negatively reinforced. For example, when toddlers try to get a cracker, the teacher may give it to them to stop the crying. In both cases, the teacher are negatively reinforced because the teachers escape from a situation that is aggressive for them. Therefore, negative reinforcement is sometimes referred to as escape conditioning. You may confuse negative reinforcement with punishment, but they are not the same. Punishment refers to discourages a behavior to make it less likely to happen again. Punishment weakens behavior. It does not necessarily refer to physical punishment but can include scolding or having to sit in a less preferred seat. Punishment functions through presenting something or removing something. It can be either positive or negative. Positive punishment decreasing the chances that a behavior will occur again by presenting an aversive stimulus following the behavior. For example, presenting a student with an office referral could function as punishment. Removal punishment is decreasing the chances that a behavior will occur again by removing a pleasant stimulus following the behavior. For example, teens are grounded for misbehavior as negative punishment. These consequences will only qualify as punishment if they actually change the learner's behavior, regardless of the teacher's parent's intention. I have here a matrix from Karen Magruder to show what this looks like. We have here the positive reinforcement and positive punishment. Uh, positive means introducing or adding something. Then in this row, we have both uh, reinforcement which increases the behavior in this row. We have also both types of punishment which decreases the behavior. So, I basically use this matrix to go through. I put in orange color this one's reinforcement because these are things that you want to do to encourage increases of behavior. And punishment is in pink color is what you want to do to discourage, reduce uh, behavior. But there is just two different ways of doing it. So with positive reinforcement, you are introducing something positive to reward or increase the behavior. So for example, if John Paul earn an A grade in school, maybe his parents will buy him ice cream. He's getting an ice cream that he did not have before. Introducing an ice cream to reinforce the behavior of getting good grade in school. Another way to encourage him for getting an A grade would be to take away something that he does not like. 
For example, this he does not like doing washing plates. And if she said, my child, you did a great job on your test today. You don't have to do your dish. It is something taking away that you do like as a word for uh, to reinforce the, the behavior. Now, in the opposite word, let us say that the kid did poorly in the school and you want to punish or decrease the behavior of poor study habits or poor grades. An example of a child getting spanked that is introducing something new, getting hit. It's something that was not happened before and now it is discouraged the behavior. This is the example of positive punishment. And another way to punish or decrease the behavior would be to take something away negative. But in this case, you are taking something in a way of punishing them. For example, here, a child video games has taken for earning a bad way. That's going to make the child not want to do it again because you took away something that they wanted. In conclusion, Operant conditioning applies lar largely to issues of class and student management. It is very relevant to shaping skill performance. A simple way to shape behavior is to provide feedback on learner performance. Knowledge of success is also important as it motivates future learning. However, it is important to vary the type of reinforcement given so that the behavior is maintained. Operant conditioning can be used to explain a wide variety of behavior, from the process of learning to addiction and language acquisition. It also has practical application which can be applied in classroom. However, operant conditioning fails to take into account the rule of inherited and cognitive factors in learning, and thus is an incomplete explanation of the learning process in humans and animals. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and you will always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God will reward those who are steadfast, unmovable, and, and abounding in His work. Those people who keep sharing His gospel who display good patience and reflect Christ's character to others. And to those who are unfaithful in His duty, that will punish them in his soon paper. That's all for our video today about operant conditioning by BF Skinner. Thank you for listening and see you in our next topic. Bye!